morning all of you students today we are going to learn about equations uh, from grade 9 you are learning how to solve equations now in grade 11 from this lesson we are going to learn how to solve simultaneous equations with fractional indices simultaneous equations with fractional indices here in equations we have fractional coefficients. Here the coefficient of x is half, coefficient of y is 1 over 3. So before we didn't solve equations like this. Now here we are going to solve this fraction, uh, simultaneous equations with fractions as coefficients. First, we have to name these two equations. We will put 1 here and 2 for this equation. So, we know how, uh, when we have whole numbers as the coefficients, we know how to solve the simultaneous equations. We have to make the coefficients equal. Here also the same way, we have to make the coefficients equal. How can we make the coefficient equal? There are three ways. Today I am going to teach you all the three ways. First way is we can omit these denominators. So how can we omit these denominators? Right, we will see. We can take the LCM of both coefficients and we can multiply each and every term by that LCM. When we take 2 and 3, what is the LCM of it? Yes, you know that LCM of this is 6. So, we can multiply the first equation by 6. Right? Now, we will multiply this 1 over 2x multiplied by 6 plus 1 over 3y multiplied by 6 and also do not forget to multiply 20 by 6 right each and every term should be multiplied by the LCA when you multiply these two you you can divide 2 and 6 by 2 here 3 then 3 and 6 by 3 here you get 2 then here you get 3x plus 2y equals 120. We will name it as 3. Okay. Same in the, that way, we can multiply this second equation also by its LCM. What is the LCM of 6 and 4? 4 and 6? Yes, 12. So, you can multiply the second equation by 12 then 1 over 4x multiplied by 12 minus 1 over 6y multiplied by 12 equals 0 multiplied by 12. Now when we simplify this equation you will get here 3 3x minus 2y equals 0. We will name it as 4. Right. Now we are going to simplify third equation and fourth equation. Now our third equation is 3x plus 2y equals 120. Our fourth equation 3x minus 2y equals 0. You know how to solve these two equations. When you have the same coefficient with different signs, you have to add the two equations. It's really easy. Right now, we'll add 3 and 4. When you add the third equation and fourth equation, you can get in this way 3x plus 2y plus 3x minus 
2y equals 120. Now you know this plus 2y and minus 2y is cancelled. So when you add these two you will get 6x equals 120. When you want to take the value for x you have to divide both sides by 6. When you divide 6x by 6 and 120 by 6 you will get x equals 20. Right? Now we have got the answer for x and we want the answer for y also. So what do you have to do? You have to substitute the value for x and get the value for y. We will substitute for the fourth equation. Substituting x equals 20 for the fourth equation. Then 3 into 20 minus 2y equals 0. So it's easy for me to shift this minus 20y to the other side. Then it becomes plus 2y. Then here 60 equals 2y. Then divide both sides by 2. Then you will get y equals 30. Then the value of x is 20 and the value of y is 30. So that is easy. I told you there are three ways to solve these simultaneous equations. We have done the first one. Now this is the second way. Here also we have simultaneous equations with fractional indices. Now we are going to solve this in different way. That is we can subject either x or y and we will substitute that value for the other unknown term. It is like this. From the first equation I will make x as the subject. How can we make it? Here 1 over x equals I will take this 1 over 5 to the other side. Then it becomes plus 1 over 5, 5y. Then there we have minus 2. You have to write it. Now when you are subjecting you have to omit this 6 also. How can you omit this 6? You can multiply each and every term by 6. Now we will multiply each and every term by 6. Here also by 6. Then you will get x equals 6 over 5 minus 12. Now we got here we forgot to put y. Now we got the value for x using y. Right? Now we have to substitute the value for x for the other equation is using this y. Right? We will see that. Right? Now we have got the value for x. We are going to substitute it here. 1 over 3 instead of x we have to put that value 6 over 5y minus 12 then this term 1 plus 1 over 4y equals 9 this is our new equation you can see in this equation you don't you don't have x you have only y so it's easy for you to solve we will see how to solve this. When you are simplifying, you have to multiply the both terms by 1 over 3. Now, when you are simplifying this, this equation, you will get 2 over 5y minus 4 plus 1 over 4y equals 9. Here you have 2 over 5y and here you have 1 over 4y. Then here you have a number. So it is easy for you all to take this minus 4 to the other side. Then it becomes plus 4. Then after simplifying these y terms, finally you will get the value of y as 20. Value of y as 20. Now you can substitute the value of y 
to, to our previous equation. Here, when you are, when you are, multi, uh, when you are substituting this 20 here, you can get the value for x. When you are substituting the value of y here, you will get the value of x. Finally, you will get the answer for x as 12. x as 12. y equals 20 and x equals 12. Now we have learned two ways to solve simultaneous equations with fractional indices. This is the third way. Now when you look at this e these two equations, you can see the coefficient of b is little bit equal. Little bit means the denominators are equal. So when you look at this equation, we can see it's easy for us to omit this b because the denominators are equal. No? So we have to make the numerators also equal then the coefficient of b is equal. So we can easily remove the b part. Now first of all we have to name the two equations. This is as 1 and this is as 2. So first we have to make the coefficient of b in the second equation as 2 over 3. What can we do? We have to multiply the whole equation by 2. We will do that. We will multiply the whole equation by 2. Second equation multiplied by 2. Then 5 over 6a into 2 plus 1 over 3b into 2 equals 4 into 2. Now when you Simplify this, you will get 10 over 6a plus 2 over 3b equals 8. We will name that equation as 3. Now you can see here also the coefficient is three, 2 over 3. Here also the coefficient is 2 over 3. So we can easily remove these two terms. How can we remove? You know if you have the same coefficient with the same sign, you have to subtract the two equations. You have to subtract the two equations. Right. So it is easy for you all to subtract the first equation from the third equations. Right. Ten over 6a plus 2 over 3b minus do not forget to put the bracket right then 1 over 2a plus 2 over 3b equals 8 minus 1. You know if you forget to put the bracket here you are putting the subtraction sign or the minus sign only for the first term. So you can't remove this b term by putting only uh, by putting the minus sign only for this term. You, then your answer is wrong. If you are subtracting the whole statement or the whole part from this, that's why I put the bracket. Otherwise, this minus, if you do not put this bracket, th this minus sign is only for this a, 1 over 2a. So, the, then you will get the wrong answer, right. Now, we, when you are simplifying 10 o, 10a over 6 plus 2b over 3, here minus 1 over 2a minus and plus becomes minus then minus 2 over 3b equals 7. Now you can see here you have 2 over 3b plus 2 over 3b, here you have minus 2 over 3b. Then these two terms can be cancelled. So you can cancel these two terms. Then here you have 10a over 6 minus 
1 over 2 a equals 7. So, it is easy for you all to simplify these two terms, simplify and get the answer for a. After simplifying this, you will get the answer for a as 6, a equals 6. I hope you can get the answer. Right now, you have to substitute the value for a either for the first equation or for the second equation and you can get the answer for b. Right, we are going, uh, it is easy, I think it is easy for, our, for us to substitute for the first equation. We will see how to substitute 1 over 2 into instead of a you have to put 6. When you are substituting, use to put a bracket then it is easy for you all to recognize the substitution value plus 2 over 3b equals 1. Here you can get 3 plus 2 over 3b equals 1. So, then you can take this plus 3 to the other side, then you will get minus 3, then 2 over 3b equals 1 minus 3, 2b over 3 equals minus 2 and the value of b is minus 3. The value of b is minus 3. I hope you also can be able to get the answer for b. Now we are going to learn how to solve quadratic equations using factors. You have learned how to solve simultaneous equations. Now we are going to learn how to solve quadratic equations. In quadratic equations, we have square terms. Can you look at this board? x squared plus 5x minus 24. So, the first thing is that you should know in quadratic equations, we have two solutions because we have x squared term no? so we have we, we will get two answers for x we will see how to solve this first of all before solving this we should know how to factorize this quadratic for quadratic statement or quadratic equation so just forget this zero now we ha we have only x squared plus 5x minus 24. We have to factorize this. Can you remember how to factorize this? Yes, you have to multiply the coefficient of square term and the constant and you will get when you multiply 1 here the coefficient of x squared is 1 and the constant is minus 24. When you multiply those two you get minus 24 minus 24. Then you have to find the factors of 24 by subtracting you should get 5. Can you remember we have done this in grade 9 right. Now tell me uh, what are the factors of 24 when you are factors of 24 are 24 into 24 and 1 or 24 into 1. Then the other one 12 into 2, the other one 6 into 4, the other one 8 into 3. These are the way to form 24. Now when you subtract the factors, the two factors, see whether you can get 5. When you subtract 24 and 1, you will get 23. Then when you subtract these two, you get 10. When you subtract these two, again you get 2. And when you subtract these two, you will get 5. So that is the two factors we need, 8 and 3. From that, we can form that 5. Right Now, x squared instead of this 5x, I have to put 8 and 3. So, if you need to put, if you need to get plus 5, you have to put 8 plus 8x and here minus 3x minus 24 equals 0. I hope you can remember this. If you need to get plus 5x, you have to put plus sign for the greater factor. 
if you need minus 5x here, you have to put minus sign for the greater factor. By you, if, you are, if you want to get the middle factor by subtracting definitely, you have to put the two different signs to the two factors. Right. Then from these two, you can take x out. Then it becomes x plus 8. From both these two, you can get x out. Then from these two, you can get minus 3 out. Then here you can get x and you know when you are taking minus 3 to the uh, minus 3 as the factor, you have to divide each and every term from minus 3. Then this minus sign becomes plus. Why? Minus minus becomes plus. When you are multiplying the mi minus sign and minus sign also you will get plus value. When you are dividing also you will get plus value. Then when you divide minus 24 by minus 3 you will get plus 8 plus 8 then equals 0. From these two you can take x plus 8 in as the factor then you the here x is remaining and here minus 3 is remaining then equals 0. What is the meaning of this equation? It means multiplication of these two terms is equal to 0. It means either this term is equal to 0 or this term is equal to 0. We know 2 into 0 is also 0. 0 into 2 is also 0. Then it means either of this term is equal to 0. So we can make x plus 8 as 0 or x minus 3 is equal to 0. From this statement you, we can get x equals minus 8 or x equals plus 3. Can you get that? I told you from the beginning of this statement, I told you in when you are, when you are simplifying quadratic equation, you should get two answers. Here we have got two answers. x is equals minus 8 or x is equals 3. Is that clear? Right. Now we have learned how to solve simultaneous equations and quadratic equations from using factors. Now I hope you can understand everything and I hope you will practice this at home. So you can use your textbook and you can do the exercise and also you can use the past papers and try to solve the questions regarding this equation lesson. Hope you can get this well and have a nice day.